my dad bought, this is where I live, I don't know. I live on Forest Mountain Road. I live in Upper Oxford Township. But if you look over here, there's London Dairies over here and Penn's over here, so I'm kind of in a corner like, you know. And the last arrowhead I found was right down here near the creek. I found quite a few of them down in there. And I could find him in here if I look for it. Mm -mm -mm. I used to know where he was at. He's hiding in there. I ain't gonna look for him. <laughs> Anyhow, it was last it was last summer when I found it. I was bringing the cows in. You find them in the cow path, or you can find them anywhere. You know, when you say anywhere, you can get in a lot of trouble because I had them up at Fags Manor Church, and uh, I, and there's a lot of little kids up there. I said, well, I found them everywhere. I even found some along the road. You know, I did find one in a ditch along the road. It was all over. I was carrying all these out. And all these little kids came up to me, and they each had a gravel. He says, this one, this one. <laughs> it was kind of neat, you know. <laughs> but uh, anyhow, my dad found the first one. I guess I can find it. Here it is. This is the very first one we found. It was near the woods. There was a big ditch out here. I think it's 1944. He's filling a ditch in. He found this little silt. So uh, it's been a neat rock. It was in the attic for a long time before we got interested in it. And over the years, uh, well, I got out of high school. I, I knew I wanted to be a farmer, so. I learned one thing, you never make much money farming, but you find a lot of arrowheads if you look. <laughs> but uh, a lot of them I found when uh, cultivated. We used to cultivate corn, and you go so slow you go to sleep, and you see a nice arrowhead, it wake you up, you know, that was great, you know. But uh, I farmed the Cohen farm, it's on 41. On 926, before you get to 41, on the right, down in there, there's 125 acres of that farm. And I farmed it for 17 years. And, and that's where, I guess, like half of this collection came from. But it was, it was very competitive farming that because the man that farmed it before me would follow me around. He's hunting arrowheads. All he could say at the end of the turn said, make the plow go deeper, you know. So he got so obsessed with it that his wife and him was following me around the field looking for arrowheads and his wife was doing the milking. So, <laughs> so you know what happens there. After a bit he was out of business. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then the other neighbor, uh, he, would, he, he got the kids to find them. He'd give them 15 cents for every arrowhead they found. And then this other guy found out, but he said, I'll give you guys a quarter. So, <laughs> so he tried to you know, build his collection up. But uh, it's a lot of fun you know, looking for them. But you know, after a rain, uh, you could really find them. You know, you'd go out there and and boy, oh boy, you know, when, when you found a good one, you never forgot it. You know, that was, that was a real experience. But this is probably the best one. My brother found it. Uh, this came from uh, Upper Oxford Township, below where I live. It's called uh, at Pusey Mill and Forest Manor Road. There's a crossroads and there's a Manor Hunt estates there. The farm is no longer uh, a f farm. It's like a housing development now. And, and I found a lot of them down there. One time I found, I think it was a half a dozen of them in half an hour, or an hour. But it was, it was great. It rained all night. And, and you, know, you, you know, you just put them in your pocket and they were nice ones. A lot of them were chips and broken ones, and I didn't bring them, I put them in a basket, but 
to find them, you'll find where they worked, the stones, the little pieces, and, uh, and they, a lot of times, most of the time they're along a creek, and some of them, uh, there's a knoll out near, yeah, near that woods there, in that picture, is where this one came from. It was on a little, there's a little knoll right there, just about 100 feet from the woods. And you, but, you, know, you find them when you're not looking for them. You, know, you find them in a garden or, you know, it's really, you know, it's really neat. If you look too hard, you'll never find them. You'll never find them. If you go too fast, you'll step on them, you know. So you got to just fool around. A lot of people like to take a stick and, you know, kick, Kick them up that way. Uh, some of these, yeah, this one, this one belongs to my uncle. He loaned it to me. He said, I'll bring it up tonight. Tomorrow I'll take it back. But this came from uh, going out Fernwood Road uh, near Charlotte Wrigley's farm. The Whites had that farm. And Jack Lynch lived there in the 30s before Wrigley's bought it. And that's a really a nice stone. And he gave it to my uncle. He was, he had a lot of, uh, he had a farm on 926, I guess below the landfill. That's where he moved from the, you know, where the Wrigley's farm was. But he always had those, had a machine gun in the yard and about 15 F-20s on the barn bridge. Had them all around there. He's kind of he never married. He was a really interesting person. You know, I'd go over and talk to him. That's been a few years ago. Oh, boy. Let's see. Yeah, this is one of my... Now, this Cohen farm uh, joined 796 out here. There'd be like three sections of it. There's a horse place out there now. But I was plowing, man. I was flying along. and. And I seen it in the fur, but I ran over it and I broke it into three pieces. And I go back, I said, I'm, I'm either crazy or I seen Indian rock. So I started digging, so I found it. I found this and I glued it together. So it was a, this was a real rare find for around here. Other collectors said that they never found anything like this. So I was real, real fortunate to find that one. It was kind of a soapstone, like a bowl, and it's been, I guess the, over the years it got broke up, and, you know, a disc and a plow, all kinds of heavy farm machinery is hard on them. But it was, it was kind of neat. I can see where I glued it. If you ever go out, see, you go out 926, before you get to 41, uh, you look, look down there and you'll see a giant oak tree. And I guess they, it's a pen oak. I mean, it's it's a beautiful tree. It's I should have took a picture of it. And I'd say about 50 feet from that tree is where I found this. I was planting wheat, and I thought, boy, this is neat. This is my a real tomahawk. You know, you don't find too many of them. You know, this was a this was a good day. And then the other time, I was picking up. Uh, Back then, I used to bale a straw on the ground. That was before we had bale throwers. I was picking the straw up. Now, oh, that's a piece of an old cement block. Now I got to looking at it. Well, that was Indian stone. You can see where the head broke off. So that was a good day. And then all the way in the middle field, yeah, below the oak tree, this, this stone has looks like a perfect chicken foot on it. It has all kinds of markings and I guess snakes and everything. If you got good imagination, you know, you can look at it, but it's something the Indians had. It's, it's got, you know, you can, when you can look at that and see it. Uh, here's a throwing stone I found down there. They, they were highly accurate at throwing these things at animals. I wouldn't want him to throw it at me, mm -hmm. but <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, not too far from that tree is where I found this little, uh, I guess a nutcracker. It's got two places for your fingers in it, so you can crack nuts or something with it. I don't know. And this was a big one here where they where they ground stuff on. 
and it was picking up rocks. And I said, well, that rock's too smooth, the top, you know. That wasn't a regular rock, so. I guess, I have a friend in Puerto Rico, and, and uh, he found this, and he gave it to me. It has a tribal marking. He said it was a ceremonial stone, but it, it was really neat. I don't know, it didn't come from this area, but I, I thought it was nice to bring along. Mm -hmm. And I had a milk truck driver. Uh, he was a colored guy. He was a really nice man. And he was building a fence one day, and the post hole digger wouldn't go down. And then he had to dig it out with a bar, and he's, here he was grinding on the end of this tomahawk. So he said, I didn't want it. He gave it to me. So it was really nice of him, you know. And we was across the street from where I live, we had the woods next to the Hamilton Farms where we found this one. It was dragging logs out and it got kicked up. I think it got broke part of it. But uh, if you live on a farm, you pick up rocks. And that's part of it, you know. There's nothing like tearing up machinery with rocks, but. But this rock was unusual. It, it, had, it looked like it had coal in it. I don't know if it's black flint. But I don't think the Indians had it, but I thought it was pretty neat, so I brought it along. It looked like it had a piece of gold in it, and I chipped it out and lost it. I was going to have it checked out. But I have heard that there has been gold found in Chester County. So if we could find some oil, we'd all be better off. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. <laughs> yeah, this is a uh just down the road from where I live, I found this one. I think it's black flint, I don't know, but it's the only one I found down there. But uh yeah, this down uh at that biddle place where what do they call these uh you know, I should. I knew the names of all these stones, and I, I'm gonna have to ask Vivian. She knows. <laughs> uh, it's a ceremonial stone, but they drilled holes through it, and, and uh, you'll never find one that's all together. The frost broke them up. George, do uh, you know what that is? You probably know. That's a banner. Stone. Banner stone. There you go. There we go. Only found two of them. That was for the ends of spears. Okay. But I found, I found this one deep. I was digging a fence post hole, and I said, well, how did that thing get down in there? It's a round clay. Whether the Indians had it or, or who had it, but I couldn't get over it being in the ground. And they find a lot of stones, I guess, they, they chipped with. They, they don't look like arrowheads, but they, were, you know, they got points. Maybe that was a skinning stone, probably, wasn't it? Something where they tore the hides off with. And, I'm not expert. Here's one. This I don't know. This is an unusual stone. It's real. Were the Indians had it or what? It had a groove cut in it. But uh, some of them. Here's one that has little teeth on it. Looks just like a saw blade. I mean, I thought that was really neat how they put that on there. Uh, most of them you find are broke, you know, but. A lot of these are, are all together. Uh, I don't know. It, see now, down Indians. See, Indian steps across the Susquehanna. There's a bunch of them. We were just talking about it. And I'm going to go over and see it. I went over there and it was closed. But they got them all around there if you ever get a chance. Across the Norman Wood Bridge, you turn right about eight or ten miles, yeah, something like that. They had a big powwow there last year. Everything, all the Indians from everywhere came there. It was big. But we had a one-room school reunion that day, so I didn't get to go to that one. Uh, I don't know, I guess maybe I better leave the Indians alone and start on the bills. <laughs> Let's see, now where I live, back, Back here was a, 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 this mill. Let's see now. This was Lights' mill, or Woods had it. This is one of the pictures. It has 1870, but the vines got it all covered up. I can, 
I don't know. I got I got another one here. It shows 1871. Got a bunch of pictures of that mill. I heard they were going to tear it down. We just took pictures of it. I got five of them. But it, it was really unique. It had uh, it had 1870. Somewhere I'm going to find it here. Yeah, here it is. 1870, and right here's where, the, where they lived. See, the miller lived in the thing, but that horse trailer happened to be there that day when we took the picture. Uh, Ferdinand Woods owned that farm, and, and him and his brother worked together. They built a lot of covered bridges in Chester County. Uh, the most notable one was Glen Hall Bridge. It was burned in, in 1962. It was near Northbrook. It replaced a, uh, a steel bridge. There was two spans there. Uh, Ferdinand, I think he built barns too because from, I'm not 100% sure, but this, where I live, the barn was, an older person told me the barn was, the lumber was sawed out in that mill. And there was a turbine. Here's a, this ain't the turbine that's there, but this is what a turbine looks like that operated that sawmill. It's up, up and down saw. And, and, uh, Some of the logs were like 40, some of the logs go all the way across the barn. They're like 42 feet wide, you know, and they're all one piece. I think there's six or seven of them in that barn. And it's a real work of art how they built that. And in later years, uh, Roy Light operated the mill, and he had a, uh, Frick sawmill. I think Arthur Young sold it to them, and they sold uh, they sold a lot of uh, lumber there. And uh, look, I, I, could, I could hear that. I could hear. Yeah, I remember when they. There's where the sawmill was. They had a 1530 International tractor. I could hear that thing starting up. I knew they were going to saw, and you could hear that old saw. You know, it was really cool. And they had, when they sawed it out, the lumber, the sawdust went in the mill race, and there's a steady stream of sawdust going down the creek. It was, you know, you can't do that today, but, but that was really neat. And Charlie Flounder, uh, Charlie Flounder operated the mill, and uh, we took feed there a lot of times when uh, my father, I still remember, I was little then, but it was, we always looked forward to going to the mill, you know, get the feed ground. It would all be on the porch, the bags would be tied up and uh, have a note on it. And inside the mill, it was always clean. There was a box in there where he had everybody's, uh, you know, what the record of it, you know, for everyone that went there. And the mill, I guess it, they quit operating in in the 50s, somewhere in the 50s, 55, somewhere along in there. It just sat empty. But Charlie Flounder was, uh, he would sharpen the mowing machine blades for us. We'd carry them through the woods down there. And, and uh, sometimes my father would sell peaches, we'd take them carry him a little basket of peaches down, you know, a little wagon. And when he, he's buried in, Ch in uh, Fags Manor, but, uh, but I'd say that would be the last mill that operated on that uh, creek. After that, uh, before that, the other mills had quit, but that would be the very last one. And the hammer mill was an old paypack and I operated a lot of them, and they would spit cobs out at you. And, but this one was 
operate it from this turbine. And I, if I recall from what I heard, Charlie Carr had a, a machine place in Russellville and he sold Paypack and, and that's where that mill came from. Uh, the sawmill, everything was intact and toward the, wait a minute, I'm getting ahead of myself here. I should tell you about the mill race. If you, if you go to the, I don't know if you're familiar with the polo field, but there's a creek right there at the polo field. And when you cross that bridge, I'd say about 10, 15 feet below the bridge, there's a dam. It caught the water from that creek ran it around the hillside to the other branch, which comes from Fags Manor. So it funneled two creeks and run that to run that mill rate, to run that mill. And along the road, uh, where is see Barnesgate development is now where it's where Ewing Road, where it comes off, you can see one abutment, but on the other side there was another abutment, and that's where we would come over there and get water when the well went dry. We'd haul, I don't know how many truckloads of water. It went dry in the winter time. We was over there chopping ice. Other people would come over there. But in the summertime, it was really, uh, you'd see two or three cars there. People would come over there and wash their cars. You know, it was really neat along that old mill race, you know. But now there's a little bit of it left if you. If you go down Ewing Road, you'll see part of down from it. You'll see a little bit of outline of the mill race and the woods uh, across from it. There, it's like a horseshoe. It goes. Let's see. It goes around this woods. You're, over here is Ewing Road, but it just goes right around that woods. It's like a horseshoe if you ever go down through there. And in that corner. Uh, uh, all the way back in here, it's always warm because it's protected from the wind. And uh, cows got a choice between the barn and the woods. They go down there most of the time, you know. I mean, they can go wherever they want, you know, but that's where they like to go. According to Harry Hackman, an older person, uh, when we first moved there, he told my father that in this area, that was the last. That was the last place the Indians left, lived before they left this area. I mean, Indians got drove out, but that woods had historic uh, significance there. And in the back of the woods, there's an old stone quarry where they, where they used to, to mine stone for the buildings. There's old roads through the woods. <coughs> and, and the woods has a lot of memories to me because years ago when I was a boy, they would be thousands and thousands of crows. I mean, the sky would be black with them. And, and they all seemed to like to go to that woods. And these people would come out and uh, build these blinds in there and shoot them, you know. But, but I could still hear them crows holler, you know. Back then you had pheasants too, but you know, you gotta go to, you don't see them no more. But uh, I guess that woods, yeah, uh, see now, Annabelle Light was a school teacher, and every year she would bring her her students out there, and they'd have picnics in that woods. And there was one, there's a fork a tree where they put a log through that tree, and it grew around. It was really neat where you could sit on it, you know, in the back part. Uh, it was like a park in there. They used to let their cows run in there. And let's see now. In the 80s, toward the end, when Dave Light was still farming there, he's out there trying to plow. And, uh, and the corn stalks kept clogging up in the plow. And he figured out an easier way to solve the problem. The wind was blowing just right. So he's going to burn them off, you know, make his plow and go easy. <laughs> Everything was okay till the fire got to going. And, and the wind shifted. And that's something to always remember, because wind, 
when is it like a politician to concern real quick, you know? <laughs> 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 but that woods caught on fire, and there was, it was scary. It was just red glow, and there was firemen from Rising Sun. I don't know how many fire trucks was there. It was really scary, but they, I helped fight it. The neighbors fought it, and, uh, and we finally got it out, but it burnt most of the woods. Because you go in there now, the trees where it burnt, they're no good. They're just, they're ruined, you know, from the fire. But, uh, you yeah, know, there's some trees where, where we, where, when I was a kid, we'd carve our initials in them, and they're still in there. Even the other kids, if you go in that woods, you'll see some initials in there, you know. Some of them moved away, but, uh, the woods has a lot of memories. You know, woods is like, it's part of the community. And it's hard to find a woods that don't have a house in it, you know. Everywhere you go, you see a house or a trail or somebody got to put something in the woods. But that's a neat woods. I don't know how long it'll stay that way, but there's a lot of memories there. And let's see now, where am I at now? I'm in the woods. i got to get out of the woods. <laughs> 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 oh boy. <laughs> uh, you think about a lot of the things you take for granted, you know, and uh, I've lived there since I was three years old and, and I've seen a lot of farms that are no more where the farmers, I was like this was Mr. Lloyd Neal's farm, he lived down there and, and it has made a tremendous change around here. We got Old Daleville and New Daleville, but I like Old Daleville better. <laughs> 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 and that brings a lot of happy memories of uh, uh, Percy Ryle's store. Because I used to, when I'd come over from home, I would stop at that store and get something, some sodas. And, and a lot of the other people would be there. And a lot of times Lawrence Baker would be there. He'd be driving up there with a Super H. I asked him, uh, how come he took the tractor? He said he liked it better than the old Plymouth. He said, and he just <laughs> took it a nice day. <laughs> but uh, there was another little store on 41 uh, called it Flatiron Camp. And I used to go up there, this is in the 60s. It was just a little place. Then there's another one uh, going down 41 on before you get to Bill Moore's place. They called it Green Polly. I don't know. Do you remember Green Polly? This is in the 40s and the 50s, and we used to go over there and get ice cream. Boy, it was good. You know, it was neat. We were little then, but uh, but London Dairy Township is very unique because. It has two spots where you can really see if you get on those, if you stand there. And one is uh, on Hilton Road. Uh, Al Lewis had a garage out there. I think it's Rick's garage now. Another man has it. But Lat McClellan had a farm there and a the barn and everything's gone. But I could, he told me to come up here and stand right here and you can see St. George's Bridge, of which I did the towers, at, the water towers at Kennett Square. I said, wow, you know, this is really neat. So this is very high elevated around here. But if you go, see, go down Green, Green Lawn Road, I think, toward the Londonderry, the old meeting house, and you go out there, you can, you can overlook that beautiful valley. I mean, that's really something, you know, go out that road. And, Jackson Road's nice drive too. You see all them old oaks, and somebody's got a big mansion up there. I don't know how many rooms it is. I'd make me tired counting them, <laughs> looking at it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, London Dairy Township is is really neat. You know, a lot of it's been preserved, and I have a lot of happy memories of when uh, I was. 
we used to go to Bible school at, Pres at uh, Fags Manor. Uh, we had two weeks every year we'd go up there. And Mrs. Webster was our teacher. And uh, we made baskets and bookends. And, you know, it was really, it was really, really neat. And we played ball. And I think Marvin Wrigley was a better ball player than I am. <laughs> I know he was. <laughs> he was tall and he could really make it go. Uh, yeah, getting back to the Indians. At Fags Manor, if you ever go up to this cemetery, on Fags Manor Road, you go out there and you'll see one tombstone in the middle and no other ones around. It's close to the road there. And if I understand right, the person buried there is half Indian. And when they, the reason the rest of it is not a cemetery is because the Indians were buried there. So that's left in there. That was for the Indians. So we're all you know, it's kind of neat that they preserved that. But uh, the people that lives in this area, like the Ortlips that lives on the farm where they built that farm, you know, uh, Andrew Ortlip, I've gone up there and visit his grave, and a lot of my neighbors, and, uh, and I go, by, go down the road, you see them, you know. I, I see uh, Sherman Clark when I was a boy at Ever. Uh, there used to be a place called Evergreen Inn. It's Mason's Market now. And every time I go in there, he, he'd give me a Hershey bar. I mean, he'd come out of his pocket, you know, and he was, he was real special to me. And then uh, he's up there. I always think about that, you know. But uh, at, at the end of the hospital, where the hospital is now, there used to be a big milk stand. And all the farmers, it's just a big platform we put your milk cans on. I think there was three or four farmers would bring their milk there and, and, uh, and put it on that stand. And, and you put your full cans on there and he'd leave you the empty ones. If you're there, you'd take them home. And the milk went to Bergdahl's Dairy down in Booth Wynn, I think it was. And we shipped, that was the first place my dad shipped there. Then, then we shipped the Highland dairy, and, and they came to the barn, picked the milk up. And he always came, uh, he came to our place first, and then he went to Fred Hamilton's farm. And you'd never guess why. Fred Hamilton had a barn where the milk truck had to go through the barn like a covered bridge. And if he didn't have enough weight in that truck, he'd get stuck in there. So he would make sure he had enough to hold it down, you know. It was really neat. <laughs> and yeah, that was, uh, they was good neighbors, Hamilton's. They had an old windmill, I could still see that thing. I hear it squeaking, you know, and the wind blowing. I knew when, uh, when they were sawing wood, you could, you could hear that. And, See, back last year during the one-room school reunion, I was talking to Teddy, and he told me about one time they was in a hurry to, to get over to the old mill. This old mill I was just showed you, Lights' Mill. They took their feed there. and had an old Chevrolet truck, and, uh, and the back wheel fell off of it. So he said, all the kids get out, you guys got to find these lug nuts. So this road was gravel. They found that, they went up that road and found the lug nuts, jacked it up and went on over to the mill. I thought that was a neat story, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you ever, back in them days, you had no idea what it's like. Uh, uh, that road was really rough and down near the end, Near the polo field, people would get stuck. My dad would go down there and pull them out with a tractor. And there was a lot of potholes in it. And Ewing Road was paved in 1929. Our road was, I think it was early 1950. Route 41 was 53, and the cement was mixed uh, right where our 926 comes into that 
into that V. I remember them mixing it. But old 41 was one rough road. I mean, it was terrible. And uh, the Sheehan farm years ago belonged to people by the name of Davis lived there. And it was a beautiful farm. It had white. It was a show farm of the county. That's what I, I, would, I didn't see it, but that's what people told me about that farm. And some way you know, I get ready to think about something and it slips away. You ever do that? <laughs> something I really uh, want to say, you know, it must, it must have been important. <laughs> oh, I really want to say that. Yeah, anyhow, traveling up 926, uh, when you turn on the Fernwood Road, right there was a blacksmith shop at one time. And uh, opposite, uh, right that house on the corner, I think Kellett's live there now, that's a log house. So London Dairy has a lot of hidden treasures, and that's one of them, you know, the log house. And the one along 41, somebody restored it. That is beautiful. So I'm glad you guys in this township, somebody cares about them because we just lost one about two weeks ago in our township, Upper Oxford at Forestville. This guy come in there with, I don't know how many dumpsters, but in the morning the house was there, in the evening everything's gone. So it's just a lot, you know. I couldn't get over how he wiped it out, but it was sad. But uh, uh, we live in a world of change. People, everything changes, you know. But the nice part about where I live is people have been coming there to visit us all these years, and every now and then somebody shows up from a long time ago. He said, this place never changed. And, uh, I was, you know, the kids were growing up. They, have, they bring their kids there. They just like to go there, look around. Used to be in the meadow, we had a Longa Creek every year. Some, somebody from some church would come in there and They'd be, I don't know, the whole place would be full of cars down there by the creek. It was really scenic, man. Uh, let's see. I was, I was thinking about my father. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have been there. I was really lucky to have a good father. He came there with nothing, practically. And the first week he came there, I got the wrong one. Maybe I left it home. I don't know. I had a bunch of them here somewhere. I had a picture of him with a buck rake. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, my father. The first week he moved there, he was so poor, we, he worked for the neighbor for a quarter of an hour. He cleaned out chicken houses. But he, uh, he had $2,500. The people that lived there was, the man was drafted. He was, they were ready to board the house up. He didn't even know if it was for sale. And, and uh, then he bought it. I mean, it was hard to, you know, all them years was hard. But my dad, this is my dad. He bought a, the very first front end loader that S.G. Lewis sold. And this was on Ewing Road. It's a house. It's a house now where that machinery place was. Then later they built the other one, which, which is a Mr. Mulch now. But we'd bring in hay. He filled a barn floor full, and then we had to pull it up in the mow, and you could still hear them pulleys squeaking. Everything was fun until you, after you tripped the thing and the hay would cool you off, but then you got to grab the fork and, and mow it. That was so hard. <laughs> that was really work. I mean, we sweated, and uh, Hamilton's had a baler, and boy, I wish we had one of them. They had the uh, I'd see them bailing hay, and man, we'd do it the old hard way. But we couldn't afford one, so we did it. I guess we were the last ones that put loose hay up around there. I remember one time we played, my brother, he didn't like to go to school too good. And my mother and father was working away, and, and uh, he decided, oh, we're gonna stay home, you know. Well, he got he racked too many days up, and we looked out. We just happened to be outside, and here comes, uh, Mr. Thompson, I knew who he was. He was a truant officer. So we, we ran in the barn and, and buried ourselves 
in the hay. <laughs> and, and he came in there. He said, boys, I know you're in here. I see you running in there. <laughs> Let's come on out. And we just stayed there. We were real quiet. And, uh, and then we waited a long time. He said, I'm going to wait till you come out. And we just stayed there. And after he left, before he left, he said, I'm going to be back. He said, I'll be back later on. So we stayed in the barn. We kept watching through the knot hole to see if he did, and he did come back. You know? <laughs> well, I see him every now and then, and we still laugh about that. You know, and that's, that's kind of neat. You know, he remembers it, too. Had one of his old Dodge Wayfarers. It had a big old long sway back. You know, I can still see that thing. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, I graduated in 19... 59 from Oxford High School, but before that I went to uh, one-room schools of uh, Upper Oxford. It was Villanova, Penns Grove, and Oak Grove. And every year, every two years we have a one-room school reunion, and Vivian started that. So Vivian has done a whole lot for our township. And I mean, we could never, uh, nobody could ever repay what she's done to put that historic commission together in all those years. And we was, um, we're very lucky to, to have people in the township that cares. You know, a lot of people don't care. But, uh, we had a meeting last night, and every fourth Tuesday we have a meeting. So if I don't come here, I go to our meetings. But, but I like it coming here. Last winter, it was warm here. It's a lot warmer here than it was up there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah.